A true intro today. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. It means a lot. Helps me in the algorithm. But with that being said, you came for the content. I'm gonna deliver. Let's talk about Paul George. This man, this man has been asked. I don't want to throw you a bunch of numbers because you didn't come to hear me say, oh, well, in the lamination games, he shoots uh, 34%. Nah, I'm gonna keep it 100. This man is ass. His fans can't hide from it, and he can't hide from it. He could play okay in the playoffs, like in the first stretches. Well, not in this series because he's been ass against Utah. But in the Dallas series, he wasn't balling out. He wasn't playing over standards, but he was doing okay. And then when the lights shine the brightest, game six, game seven, he has to perform. It's winner go home. Elimination games. He is ass. This dude cannot throw a ball into the fucking ocean. He cannot perform it when the lights shine, shine the brightest. We have to question if he's really a top 20 player because he could perform in the fucking regular season. I want to see it translate. He has consistently, the only thing consistent about Paul George in the playoffs is him being consistently ass. Fuck out of here. I don't want to see him in another top 15 conversation or I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Who does he think he is? Who is this in the, I don't know who this is. He plays like Steve Novak in the playoffs, bro. He just stays in the corner. He's settling against Rudy Gobert. He's Rudy Gobert. He's Rudy Gobert. What the fuck? I usually try to stay calm here, spit some facts, make some good content, but I, I can't do this. Paul George has underperformed in the playoffs again. And this time it might cost him. As I said in my first video, people were on my ass clippers in six. And yeah, there's a lot of factors to the Utah Jazz being up 2-0. But I saw Paul George underperforming again. You could see him underperforming from three miles away. He does it consistently. He can have his moments in the playoffs. Like I, I'm going like 2016 after after the leg injury because it's not his leg because he could be really good in the regular season. He could be a top 15 player in the regular season. But what brings his ranking down is his underperformance in the playoffs, which happens every fucking year. He is literally a ticking time bomb ready to shit the bed in the biggest games where you need him to perform. Oh Lord, oh Lord. I can tell you right now, he's not gonna perform. And I can see him being asked the rest of the series and costing the Clippers another run. Because he's just gonna be asked. He's a, him being ass is the package that comes with him. You could have a top 15 player in the regular season, but is it really worth it? Yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to throw numbers at y'all, but just listen to this. In games when the Clippers could have been eliminated this year, Game 6, Game 7 in Dallas, Paul George shot 40% and 33%. And even though in those games, yes, he was grabbing boards, he was doing a little bit of playmaking, he, he was trying to up himself because he knew he just can't hit a fuck. He cannot buy a bucket in the clutch or in the playoffs. And I'm not going to be like Shaq where if Paul George does good, I'm just going to be like, yeah, it's because of me, bro. Nah, I want him to be ass. I'm, it's not because I'm a hater. I kind of am, but not because of that. I just live for the toxicity. I just want to wake up on Twitter one day and see Paul George being flamed because I live for the fuckery. But on a real note, I want to see him do better because he is obviously a top 15 talent. He could be top 10 great well he's a good defensive player now his defense definitely did fall off a bit but i am like 90 percent sure if he wasn't so ass in the playoffs he would definitely find himself in these conversations more often but it's just something that comes with him you have to face facts if you want paul george on your team you're gonna have to face that you have a playoff choker on your team and now if utah wins i'm not gonna gloat about it but i am gonna say in that video i did stay Paul George is going to be asked. I said it. I saw it from a mile away. Face facts. Clippers fans, Paul George fans, face facts. He's not going to perform in your wildest fucking dreams. So, yeah, um, take the L. Y'all are frauds. Second round exits. Uh, the Clippers curse will continue. And I'm still going to live for the fuckery about it. So, so yeah, kind of sad that I have to root for a uh, Utah Jazz team, but... Anything for the fuckery. Fuckery does not have a time.
And six hours later, after five minutes of me slandering Paul George, he is 10 for 21, has 25 points in game three, probably the most important game of their season so far. And I look like a fucking idiot, so let's talk about it. I'm going to change the title. The, pa- the title was going to be Paul George, it's ass. Now the title is probably going to be Paul George is confusing because he's confusing. He could switch it on and off, but... He decides to give us ass for most of it. And even though the original title was going to be that he's ass, the statement that I'm saying in this new title that he's confusing still is true because he could turn it on in the regular season. He could be a top 15 player, as I mentioned earlier. And yet in the playoffs, he still crumbles when the lights are brightest. Obviously not right now. I'm happy that he's performing well. But at the same time, you're making me look like a fucking idiot dog and i don't like it <laughs> but um with that being said like and subscribe for more content it helps me in the algorithm and thanks for watching good night